All right, welcome to another JT Gatoring video. This one is a little bit different. Normally don't see anything like this, but this is a special event. It's alligator season here in Florida, 2018, and I got a lot of alligators to get. Normally I can hold on to them for about a day and then I have to process them or sell them to somebody else. Now, what I'm gonna build or what I have built by now is an alligator cooler. So it's made out of plywood, foam, and that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Um, go ahead and show you the pictures. So this was a pretty simple build. The plywood that I used was 0.5 inches, it was half inch. And then all of these in the corners and everything was one inch because I used one inch foam. These are regular 2x4s, and as you see with the plywood, it's just 3-ply. It was the cheapest plywood I could get. The uh, screws I was using were inch and a quarter. You uh, used wood glue for doing all the joints and uh, putting them together. Overall, this box was 9 feet 3 inches on the inside, and as you see here on both sides a piece of plywood only comes by eight foot so went ahead and on that seam I put a two by four so I put a two by four on that seam help strengthen it also put a two by four on the bottom uh, two by four along the top and then some underneath as we get into the drawings I'll show you where exactly those went just to go back um, I did pre-drill everything uh, for the screws just so nothing would split. Um, yeah, just so you get good pictures. At the end of the video, I'll put all these into the, the end of the video so they're higher quality and you can see them better. Set it up on saw horses. Um, these are about the same, just to look equal, and then I ended up putting two more two by fours in the center because it was sagging a lot when I put an alligator in there. So to help strengthen it, I put two two by fours in here and it worked great. I didn't put them on the side, I just put them on the bottom and it worked great. There's the underside view. Uh, one thing to note that I liked that I did was put the, uh, the plywood on the bottom and then put the sides on top of that it added some strength and made it easy to screw and glue everything. Alright, so here's the foam. Uh, this was has an R5 rating. It's the XPS foam, one inch thick. Got it from Home Depot. Lowe's only has three quarter and then I think one and a quarter maybe or half. And No, they only have half and then three quarter. Uh, Home Depot had one inch, so that was great. With this one inch uh, foam, it had a 16 inch mark on it and a 24 inch mark. So you had the 24 center line and then you had a 16 on each side of that. The inside of the bottom of this box is 24 inches, so that made it really easy to cut it to size. Here's the lid. The lid goes over the 2 by 4 is on each side and then the foam sits in between uh, each piece of foam there so it fits nice and snug. To put the foam onto the plywood I was using hot glue. Hot glue didn't work too good after moving it around um, so I started just using screws. The hot glue works but um, for these flexible pieces like the lid it just kept popping and just didn't work that great, so I would just use screws if I were you. Here it is again. This one inch on the corners, I put it on every corner, so on the bottom, along the side corners, I didn't put it on the top, but that just gave me a nice flush way to get everything sitting right. This was the plastic sheeting that I put inside of it. So it's six mil thick, 25 foot long, 10 foot wide. I used about half of the sheet 
to do the inside of the cooler. So real quick, these are the measurements. I just drew it up on draft site. So right here, 27 inches from the plywood, and then the overall outside dimension of it is 31 inches. So from two by four to two by four, the very outside is 31 inches. The inside diameter is 24 inches. These blue dashed lines are hidden lines, and the black lines are the outside lines. Overall, it sits 24 inches high. Uh, you can look at the measurements more if you want to. Go ahead and pause it. I'm going to uh, continue on. So this is the side view. That was the front view over there. The overall length of it is 119 inches. So it's about 9.5 feet long. And then the inside measures um, is nine feet three inches. It was three, nine and one thirds repeating. So um, it's a little over nine feet three inches for the inside. Now the one thing for making it that length was that our average alligator is under nine foot or around nine foot. So with it laying in there, it lays straight. The problem that I had with using a tarp is that I would curl it up and with that tail um, staying curled and especially when you cool it it stays that way it makes it really difficult to get that hide off of that tail in the curved position so I wanted something straight that would work great and here's the supporting two by fours underneath just as you see it again the blue lines are hidden just as a drawing. This is a top view, but I didn't put many measurements on it or anything, so nothing special there. One thing I would change, and especially as we get into the video, is that the inside dimension is 24, 24 inches, and that's a little bit too wide. I'd probably like to see it at 18, just so that way there's not that much air space and it fits a little better. But we'll go ahead, jump into the, the videos that I took and explain it there. So as you see when we get up into the cooler, um, looks really doesn't look nice nice but it works great and it looks fairly nice to me. Um, as you see on the sides there's a little bit too much of a gap that I would like. I'd like that the whole cooler skinnier so it fits that alligator a little tighter. This was a very skinny alligator but I would still like to see the, the inside of that cooler skinnier. The lid fits really tight, I got lucky, did really good on it, so it does fit uh, to my liking, and this way it'll also help with using it as a table and putting coolers on it and stuff. Um, pretty airtight. Uh, the wrap is alright, um, it's not like plastic, it's almost like a um, cooking sheet wax paper type material, it's not really like a regular plastic like material that you would think. So one thing that I would change would be uh, trying to make some type of divider so that way if I do get a small alligator like that seven footer that was in that video um, I could put that divider in there so that way it cuts down on the air space and I don't have to cool that much more air. I can just cool what the alligator's length is. Uh, one reason that I went with the liner that I got is that it is easy to replace and it's cheap. Uh, one alternative that I thought of doing but I just ran out of time and didn't want to spend the money on it was lining the inside of it and probably the outside of it with fiberglass and epoxy. Um, would have been pretty expensive and I didn't know if this was going to work that good or not. So um, fiberglass and epoxy is another way to go but uh, for now for this season we're just using that liner. The reason why I went to this cooler instead of using just a regular tarp was that I got tired of cleaning the tarps. Um, so I only have one really long tarp and it's just a pain in the butt to clean. So one thing that I'm starting to do now is that I'm going to clean the alligator first with bleach and soap. Clean it all down first, make sure it's 
it's good and then I'll put it into the cooler so that way that liner should stay fairly clean uh, throughout the season. With the tarp I still use a tarp in the truck bed but I'm just putting it over the alligator that sits on top of the ice just to keep the sun off of it as I'm getting it to the cooler. Now with this cooler it is awesome. I did keep that one alligator in there. It kept that ice for um, a little over a day but it was like a freezer in there when I opened up that cooler. It was awesome. And especially having that AC in that, uh, in that room there really made it great. So if you're looking to make a cooler like this, maybe you're going to use it for big fish or regular game, uh, what have you. This is just an idea and something that I whipped up. I think all the wood and all the materials was about $200. So it's not cheap, but it's not that expensive. If you're looking for a big quality cooler, then this is really a cheap alternative. You can also double line it with double the foam and it'll help make it cooler that much more. So. If I helped you out, please comment down below if you think you can help anybody else out or have any more comments. Again, comment section down below. If you're looking for information, down in the comments section below. Um, help support the channel by subscribing, using any of the links down in the description. Uh, some of them are affiliate links, so that way I get a little bit of a commission from them. But other than that, you can look on the JT Gatoring website. I'll have an article up about this soon and hopefully enjoy it something different we'll see how it lasts and hopefully we we'll get some more alligators to fill the cooler with so see you next time on jt gatoring